गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स एज पर अवर ए एम ए सिस्टम दिस वीक ऑल्सो वी आर हैविंग वन प्रोग्राम इट्स अ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन द सब्जेक्ट ग्रीन हाउस एग्रीकल्चर अ बिजनेस ऑपॉर्चुनिटी द प्रोग्राम इज गोइंग टू बी डिलीवर्ड बाय मिस्टर अमित वसावड़ा इज एग्रीकल्चर मैनेजमेंट कंसल्टेंट एंड ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ अहमदाबाद मैनेजमेंट एसोसिएशन आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर दिस पर्पज ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्राम बिफोर यू बिगिन द प्रोग्राम जस्ट आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस मिस्टर वसावड़ा ही इज अ ट्रेनर ही हेज रिटर्न अ बुक द विस्डम टूथ विच ए वेर द आर्टिकल्स यू कैन फाइंड इन वेरियस न्यूज पेपर्स एंड मैगेजीन्स फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम ही हेज गॉट वेरी वास्ट एक्सपीरियंस इन ट्रेनिंग मोर देन वन लैख थर्टी थाउजेंड पीपल फ्रॉम डिफरंट एरिया इंक्लूडिंग कॉर्पोरेट डायरेक्टर्स गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल्स फॉरेन डिग्नेट डेलीगेट्स एम बी ए स्टूडेंट्स पुलिस ऑफिशियल्स फार्मर्स एक्सेट्रा मिस्टर वसावड़ा हेज प्रिवेज ऑफ बीइंग अ मैनेजमेंट स्पीकर एट वेरियस चिंतन शिविर्स ही हेज इज इंटरनेशनल प्रेजेंस एज कंसल्टेंट टू वेरियस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन पर्टिकुलरली आई एल ओ दैट इज द इंटरनेशनल लेबर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जीनिवा ही हेज बीन एडवाइजर फॉर गुजरात स्टेट फाइनेंशियल कॉर्पोरेशन एंड number of other various or government or committees he has been on the board of various companies from time to time he is also a visiting faculty guest speaker at spipa iim edi cd and of course in ama also he has given so many other programs earlier he is a pioneer in greenhouse cultivation the subject for which he is going to talk in india and he is also a ceo of ecosystems it's a group company where they have got lot many other activities <clears throat> and currently he is having projects in india as well as in africa also so we'll be getting a very enriching output during this program and just as a token of uh, <clears throat> some appreciation from ama I'm giving a bouquet of flowers. Before we start the program, I request all of you to switch off your mobile phone and switch on your attention to this scintillating presentation. Yeah, <coughs> sir, please. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have bad throat, so we'll have to put up with uh, scratchy voice. uh this is a beautiful bouquet thanks for that and if you think these are beautiful flowers which send millions of uh, emotions uh, then uh, thank the greenhouses on which we are going to discuss uh, that that's all about the greenhouses these are some of the skyline and and uh, bodo these are the varieties coming from greenhouses in india uh is a august audience today and i'm reminded of one story Uh, all learned experienced distinguished people and uh, having to talk to such an audience is a difficult task uh, so i am reminded of a story once in in uh, you know history uh, they had to select uh, the the guard for gir forest now in those days seventh standard pass was the requirement and it was a very specialized niche job tracking down the lands taking care of the lands so what do you ask in in an interview so the interview committee started screening the candidates one after another and they asked one question in the middle of the night on a narrow path if you are in in the jungle and if you see the lion coming what would you do so one candidate said oh i belong to so and so family my grandfather had killed a lion with a stick what they call dang so i'll take care of that another candidate same question so he says i smoke beedis i'll light the match fire scares the lions away so they'll go away third one he says i can climb the trees so lions don't climb trees in in india african lions do so i will save myself then came one guy called himmat singh very strong robust with big mustache and the same question was posed to this man what would you do himmat singh if this happens to you so he scratched his head for a while like this and then said uh, what what will i do whatever has to be done is to be done by the lion 
એમાં હું શું કરું સાહેબ એ તો સાવા જે કરવાનું હોય સો વેન આઈ હેવ ટુ ટોક ટુ પીપલ લાઈક યુ મે બી માય સિચ્યુએશન ઓર માઇન્ડ સેટ વુડ બી કમ્પેરેબલ ટુ હિંમત સિંગ બટ આઈ વિલ ટ્રાય એકચુઅલી આઈ વિલ શેર સમ ઓફ માય એક્સપિરિયન્સીસ એન્ડ આઈ વિલ શેર વોટ એવર આઈ નો અબાઉટ ગ્રીન હાઉસીસ આઈ બીન ઇન ગ્રીન હાઉસ કલ્ટિવેશન સિન્સ નાઇન્ટીન નાઇન્ટી ટુ દેટ વોઝ ધ બિગિનિંગ ઓફ ગ્રીન હાઉસ કલ્ટિવેશન ઇન ઇન્ડિયા એન્ડ આઈ વોઝ ઇન પુણે એટ દેટ ટાઈમ વી સ્ટાર્ટેડ ઇટ ઓલ ઇન પુણે સો i would i would rather share some of my thoughts ideas experiences possibilities uh, problems and prospects uh, at the same time i would also leave it open uh, for you to have question answers or interactive uh, participation so that uh, it doesn't become a monologue and this becomes a participative process so uh, i i would uh, enjoy talking to you on your questions uh, as much as possible rather than just delivering a lecture uh like uh what what i'll do is to to focus on thoughts and ideas you know th- there is there is this uh song i'm told that there is a guy called himesh reshamya he sings songs in in hindi uh, films and there is a song called jhalak dikla ja so i'll i'll just ask this uh, small quiz uh, in that song jhalak dikla ja the word jhalak is repeated how many times i would like your responses wild guess is permitted no adverse remarks in confidential reports <laughs> please how many times the word jhalak is repeated 31 times 31 times is the correct answer yeah how many times 31 is correct any guess here what is correct answer whatever answer you'll give is a correct answer because i don't know the answer <laughs> but so but after this if you happen to overhear this song now after this session possibility is that you will start counting it because it has lingered in your mind the thoughts have been focused on this issue so likewise i'll try to focus thoughts and let's see uh if i can i can make it worthwhile for you to be here uh let us first understand agriculture agriculture is an activity where for a predetermined crop or output you cultivate you till the land you sow the seeds give irrigation you give fertilizers harvest a predetermined crop and therefore it is uh not what we call natural regeneration forests are natural regeneration they come up on their own so that's not agriculture agriculture is human intervention with the help of tools and knowledge and technology you till the soil and and uh, go for a pre determined dedicated output of a crop that is agriculture uh as we have seen the progress of agriculture globally also in india technology has contributed immensely to uh, to production as well as to some extent there is a marketing resurgence also where you talk about good seeds good planting material good fertilizers good mechanization so that's development of open field agriculture here what we are going to discuss greenhouse cultivation is basically protected agriculture you are still doing agriculture but this is a protected agriculture which means we are trying to or we are attempting um m- moderation of the conditions of growth so that the plants can grow better and there can be higher production there can be higher quality and there can be perhaps higher productivity as well greenhouses therefore are capital intensive interventions in agriculture uh a large tract of land is required for a particular production in terms of tonnage or numbers uh, here in much smaller area you can produce more uh, than even even say 10 acres can produce in a 1/4 um, of an acre perhaps so you are intensifying the agriculture through protecting the plants and you are trying to come up with higher output higher production higher productivity 
uh, but equally you are investing in the structure and the facilities that you are creating. Greenhouse cannot be manufactured. There are many people who say that we are greenhouse manufacturers. That's wrong. Greenhouse is not, a, not, not something that is a product. You can't manufacture a road. You can't manufacture a building. You create the facilities. So greenhouse is basically a facility creation for protected agriculture. <coughs> this is the basic understanding of what greenhouses are all about. How did greenhouses come about? If we trace back the history, maybe 80 years down the line, 100 years down the line, uh, Europe actually is believed to be the origin of greenhouse cultivation or protected cultivation. As you know, most of the Western Europe, even Eastern Europe, except the Southern Europe, which means the Mediterranean dream countries, have very inclement weather. They have six months of snow or cloud, another two months overlapping rains, anytime it rains, it's a barren landscape everywhere, and uh, it's all gray, snow, and there some enterprising people decided to create a glass structure with wooden frames. And amidst the entire gray snowy landscape where it used to drizzle or it was uh, snowflakes, there was a small patch within the glass house that was green. And therefore it was greenhouse. In Europe, basically, the driving consideration was preserving or, 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 or uh, absorbing as much heat within the structure so that the crops can be grown. There will be growing conditions close to the requirement of the crops or the planting material. So there the consideration was different. In India or in tropical countries or in subtropical countries, the considerations are different. You can't ape and imitate exactly what the Europeans do, though it is the same process of protected culti cultivation. So those uh, who started with this premise that everything is fantastic that happens in Europe, great technology, very expensive structures, even robotics. When they started somewhere in 90s, the projects didn't do well because the considerations in India are different. What we are talking about is a subtropical. We are nearly on a tropic of cancer. As you know, the tropic of cancer pass is very close to Ahmedabad near Himmatnagar. So, or Pune, for instance, is good altitude, so a salubrious climate, but here it's very hot. So uh, Deccan Plateau has different regime, Gujarat has a different regime, North India has a different regime, and therefore the designs also have to be different. Here we are talking about reducing the temperature, we are talking about reducing the, increasing the relative humidity because we are in a very dry uh, climate. Therefore, greenhouses started as a protective, protected culti cultivation activity in Europe. As I said, it was all about glass and wood. So the greenhouses were small because Wood has only certain length possible, uh, certain uh, structural capabilities. Eventually, with advent of uh, steel, and more significantly, plastics, in the last 30 years, greenhouse designs and structures went through a significant transition, a transformation. And uh, what we see today, especially in our part of the world, are the greenhouses made from steel structures. This could be MS pipes. This could be GI pipes. In fact, the first greenhouse that I built in 1992 in Pune, it was a five hectare project, five greenhouses of one hectare each with cold store, refer van, export oriented roses. Uh, there we had used MS pipes. We didn't have the designs. We didn't understand uh, a lot of things here. It was beginning in India and we used steel pipes there. Eventually we thought, which we painted of course, eventually we thought that GI pipes will be better, whether the square pipes should be used or whether we should use round pipes. Structurally, we felt that the round pipes are better because the load distribution is better in round structures. Now what we see in, in greenhouses everywhere, in India especially, are structures with GI pipes with LDP plastic coating with a certain uh, you know, parameters or certain specifications. And then you build into the system the irrigation, the climate making systems, the pest and disease management control systems, uh, automation is there. Uh, all these are the uh, integral parts of the components of the greenhouse. So greenhouse necessarily means the structure, what we call tambu, and then it is uh, clad with the plastic material, current modern day greenhouses, commercial greenhouses, I would say. And inside, you do the soil conditioning so that the growing conditions are controlled even in the soil, and you bring in drip irrigation, micro irrigation, 
depending on the crop, whether misting or fogging is required. These are climate making systems. So you control your relative humidity and um, temperature. As you know, when you, you, you spray uh, fine mist into the air that is hot, uh, due to the molecules of water which are colder, uh, the heat is transferred from the air molecules to the uh, water molecules. And therefore, the temperature falls and humidity goes up, which are both requirements of a good growing uh, regime for the plants. Actually, uh, I, I must clarify one technical point here, that there is nothing like cold in this world. Cold is not a state. The only state is heat. Relative lack of heat is cold. But there is no state called cold weather or cold climate. It's a relative absence of heat. Similarly, there is nothing like darkness in this entire cosmos, I would say, not just on the earth. It is relative absence of the light. So it is never dark anywhere in the cosmos, including uh, India, this world, and Ahmedabad. It's always lighted. It's only relativity that matters. So these principles are kept in mind while you design a greenhouse. Now, uh, what, do you, what do you do? What are the steps to, to start a greenhouse activity? What is the business of greenhouse all about? How it is a commercial proposition? I think that is what we'll dwell upon for the next 15 minutes. Plant ideally grows, or necessarily grows, I would say, uh, by, by uh, various factors which drive. It grows in soil. So what is the condition of the soil? Second, what is the ambient condition? Which means air. What is the wind speed? What is the temperature? What is the light? What is the relative humidity? Uh, all these determine the production of the plant. Uh, as you know, the plant leaf absorbs carbon dioxide from the air. The roots take water along with the nutrients and deliver it through the, 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 capillary, the systems, xylem and phloem, into the leaves ultimately. That is where in presence of sunlight, the photosynthesis takes place and the food is manufactured. That is, that is what makes the plant, plant grow. Uh, <clears throat> there are small, small pores which are called stomata. On a, on a leaf. These tomato are cashew, cashew, you know, we eat cashew, cashew nut like structures. They open and close depending upon the conditions in the air. Every plant has a standard protocol of optimum growing conditions. For instance, I'll take example of rose because we have roses here and I've been a rose grower significantly. Uh, you need about 70,000 lux of sunlight. You need about 15 to 20 kilometers of mild wind draft. You need about 60 relative humidity. Relative humidity is not humidity. Let us also be clear about this. Relative humidity. Humidity means the, the weight of water in given volume of air. Now when it heats up, molecules of air drift apart. So in the same volume, there'll be less humidity, same weight of water vapor. Whereas air condenses, more molecules are packed in the same volume of the air and therefore humidity, relative humidity rises. So we are talking about relative humidity, not absolute humidity. So uh, 60 relative humidity. Uh, temperature would be ideal about 28 degrees for rose. I'm just giving a general protocol for rose. And night temperature should be around 18 and average temperature between these two. These are ideal growing conditions. Like they advertise in the papers, my car gives 25 kilometers per liter. It never works out. Provided 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So provided what I said, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then the rose loves to grow. It blossoms. Now, in nature, the temperatures, relative humidity, and also carbon dioxide level. This is also important. So in nature, it continuously fluctuates. It changes in diurnal and nocturnal cycles, day and night. Variety of factors contribute. When we create a structure and create a protected agricultural activity or a facility, then we are able to do some moderation 
in terms of bringing the growing conditions of air which, which help because the stomata closes. The moment ideal conditions are disturbed, the stomata closes. If there is very high relative humidity, stomata closes. If it is very dry, the stomata closes because the plant fears that I'm losing water very fast, I'll dry and die. So they have their own system of managing. So therefore, more you bring it towards the ideal protocol conditions of growing, better is the production. So if you ask me a question, can you zero down to exact protocol and create a greenhouse which delivers precise on-dot performance? Yes. But the question is, at what cost? It will cost for this room maybe five crores just to create that ideal condition. Therefore, what you do is to study the you know, situation in a given location and look at the crop that will be fitted somewhere in this region uh, of, of ambient conditions and then you decide how much amelioration is possible by using different devices in a greenhouse and bring it to near natural, uh, uh, near ideal. But it can never be ideal. You can make a difference of about 3 to 5 degrees in temperature. You can make a difference of about 8 to 10 points on relative humidity. You can make a difference of wind velocities to some extent because it's a closed structure. You have uh, curtains and other things. So that's how you're trying to bring it to better conditions for plant growth. And you have to strike a balance as to where the trade-off is, what the traffic can bear, as they say in management. This is the cost. This is the additional benefit. And this is how I'll have high value crop. There is a difference between value addition and high value. Greenhouses do not actually support or they are not about value addition. Value addition is where you add value to a given product by changing form or otherwise. Greenhouse is necessarily suited for high value crops, not value added crops. Right? So greenhouse, uh, because you have invested certain amount of money and then you have to have high value crops which at X farm give you better production and therefore it is more viable or give you higher prices. The crops are such where you get a good price and therefore you will be able to sustain the investment and even make it better than the crops that you do in open field. So if somebody asks a question, can I grow wheat in a greenhouse? Yes, of course. Can I grow paddy? Yes. Can I grow mango? Yes, if you have a greenhouse of that design where a tree can grow. There are mangoes in certain greenhouses in Europe, dwarf varieties. You can, but can you afford to grow them? So what you can afford to grow within a greenhouse is what you design it for and what you grow there. So here, what actually makes it interesting business proposition for Indian conditions, also in Kenya, for instance, I, we have projects in Kenya also, uh, Kenya and Malawi. So these are uh, the areas where floriculture is eminently suited for greenhouse cultivation because this flower sells at 10 rupees. This flower in Valentine's Day uh, uh, window and Christmas window may sell at 50, 60, 100 rupees. And therefore, it becomes possible for you to make money out of this operation. There are greenhouse uh, growers here in Gujarat as well. One of them uh, happens to be known to me. And they have about 60 bigas of land. And uh, they have two acres of greenhouses in that 60 bigas. The rest is in open field, normal cultivation, and two acres greenhouses. Their last two years performance shows 